Good day, future engineers. Let us now solve these additional sample problems about relative motion. First of all, recall the definition of these terms as we will keep applying them in our solutions. For our first problem, we are given a river 1 km wide and with water flowing at a rate of 10 kph. An athlete wishes to swim with a velocity of 12 kph in the river at an angle theta with respect to the vertical in order to end up straight from point O to point P on the other side. We should denote the 12 kph as relative velocity of the athlete with respect to the river water because that describes his motion through the waters. Since the river water is flowing, the athlete should swim through the waters by that rate and direction to enable him to end up straight to point P. This means that if another person or an observer is moving with the current of the river, he can perceive the athlete to be moving at 12 kph at an angle theta with respect to the vertical. In this problem, we are required to get the value of theta so that the athlete will reach the opposite bank at point P and also the corresponding elapsed time. Also, when theta is set to zero, we are required to solve for the elapsed time for the athlete to reach the other side and his distance from point P upon arrival. Let's start now with the first question, the value of theta. Using the same figure, we should draw the velocity vector of the athlete along line OP and denote this as V sub A. This velocity is considered as absolute velocity because with respect to the earth or the inertial frame of reference, the athlete is moving straight from one side to the other. This means that if an observer is standing on either side of the river, he can just perceive the motion of the athlete as straight from point O to point P, although with respect to the river, the athlete is swimming with angle theta. From this figure, we can now see the absolute velocities, the V sub R and V sub A, which are all based on inertial frame of reference. To simplify our drawing, let's redraw point O, the initial position of the athlete, and the velocity of the river that tends to move the athlete along that direction. To reach point P, the athlete swims through the waters at an angle theta at 12 kph. However, based on absolute reference, the athlete is just moving straight from point O to point P. Take note that in this drawing, the length of the arrow vector of velocity is not equal to the magnitude of its corresponding displacement. In fact, they are not necessarily equal. However, the triangles formed by velocity and its corresponding displacement vectors are similar triangles. So to further simplify this drawing, we can connect the tails of the absolute velocities and then draw the given relative velocity. Always make sure that the arrow vector of the relative velocity is drawn from the arrowhead of the velocity vector of the observer up to the arrowhead of the velocity vector of the observed body. From this drawing, we can now compute the value of theta using the sine function. By substitution, we get that theta is equal to 56.44 degrees. Next, let's compute the corresponding time taken by the athlete to reach the other side. Since the width of the river is given, we can now denote the absolute displacement of the athlete from point O to point P by S sub A equal to 1 kilometer. Since displacement is equal to velocity times time, we need to solve first the corresponding velocity to cover this displacement. Based on the figure, that should be V sub A since their vectors are aligned with each other. Based on our latest drawing, we can apply the Pythagorean theorem to get the absolute velocity of the athlete equal to 6.633 kph upward. With the values of the absolute velocity and absolute displacement, we can use this formula to solve for time. 
This gives us T is equal to 0 0.1508 hours or 542.72 seconds. Now, when theta is set to 0, the value of T will become different. Before we can solve for time, we need to redraw the figure. From point O, the velocity of the river tends to move the athlete along that direction. To reach the other side, this time the athlete will swim straight through the waters at 12 kph. However, based on absolute or inertial frame of reference, the athlete can be perceived to be moving slantwise from point O to a point on the other side. To further simplify this drawing, let us connect the tails of the absolute velocities and then draw the given relative velocity. Again, always make sure that the arrow vector of the relative velocity is drawn from the arrowhead of the velocity vector of the observer up to the arrowhead of the velocity vector of the observed body. Since the width of the river is given, we can now denote the relative displacement of the athlete with respect to the river by S sub A over R equal to 1 kilometer. Since displacement is equal to velocity times time, we need to use the corresponding velocity to cover this 1 kilometer displacement. Based on the figure that should be V sub A over R, since their vectors are aligned with each other. Since these values of relative displacement and relative velocity are already known, we can now use this formula to solve for time t. By substitution, we will get that t is equal to 0 0.0833 hours or 300 seconds. For the last question, we can conclude from our figure that the required distance d is just equal to the magnitude of the displacement of the river water using time t equal to 0 0.08333 hours. By multiplying the velocity of the river water and time t, we get that distance d is equal to 0 0.8333 kilometers or 833.30 meters. Alternatively, you may get the angle between the absolute velocities using the tangent function. By substitution, we can get that angle phi is equal to 50.19 degrees. Then next, we will redraw the figure by considering the displacement vectors only. Take note that this right triangle and the previous triangle formed by velocity vectors are similar triangles. Based on our new drawing, we can solve the required distance by applying trigonometry. By dividing the 1 kilometer by tangent of angle phi, we will get the same answer as obtained previously. Let's proceed now with our next problem. You may pause now the video to read the statement of the problem. In this problem, we are given the distance between cars A and B at their initial position equal to 35 meters. Car A is moving with constant velocity equal to 36 kph while car B is accelerating at a rate of 1.5 meters per second squared. Starting from rest, we are then required to solve after 5 seconds the relative position and velocity of car B with respect to car A. Since we are required to solve for relative displacement, we need to lay out the displacement vectors of the given cars so that we can have a geometrical basis for our solution. One car is moving with constant velocity while the other one is with constant acceleration. To solve the first question, let's analyze the different motion of two bodies separately. Let's start with motion of car A. Since we will apply later on the kinematic formula, let's convert now the velocity of car A into meters per second, giving us V sub A is equal to 10 meters per second to the right. Next, we will use the first kinematic formula to get the displacement of car A. By transposition, we now express this change in position of car A equal to its velocity times time. Recall that displacement is defined as change in position. 
therefore, we can now draw and solve the displacement of car A equal to 50 meters to the right. To draw the displacement of car B, let us analyze now its motion. Using the third kinematic formula, we can manipulate the variables to express the displacement of car B. Then by substitution, we will get that S sub B is equal to 18.75 meters at 53.13 degrees from the horizontal. In our figure, we can now draw this displacement vector as follows. Now that we have the displacement vectors of cars A and B, it will be more convenient to redraw the figure as follows. Take note that this figure is based on the required 5 second interval. Based on the formed triangle, we can apply the cosine law. By substituting the needed values, we can now get the magnitude of the required relative displacement equal to 42.30 meters. To define its direction, let's denote its inclination with respect to the horizontal by angle theta. Using sine law and the obtained magnitude of S sub B over A, we now get the value of theta equal to 17.90 degrees. Therefore, our final answer should be written as follows. For our next question, we are required to solve for the relative velocity of car B with respect to car A. Previously, we created this geometrical figure for displacement vectors. If we directly differentiate each displacement with respect to time, we will get this new drawing consisting of velocity vectors. However, when we investigate this drawing, we will notice that the direction of V sub B over A is inclined upward to the left. This vector should mean that the observer inside car A perceives car B to be moving to the left and upward, where in fact the observer inside car A should perceive car B to be moving to the left and downward. Therefore, this is an incorrect drawing to use for solving the required relative velocity. To create the correct drawing for the relative velocity, let's draw first the absolute velocity of car A and car B. Then from this drawing, let's connect the tails of these absolute velocity vectors as we did before for all the sample problems under 2D relative motion. Take note that to draw the correct direction of the relative velocity, connect first the tails of the absolute velocity vectors. In this manner, the vector for relative velocity can be drawn correctly according to how the observer perceives the direction. Our drawn vector now for V sub B over A will mean that the observer inside car A perceives car B to be moving to the left and downward. To complete our geometrical drawing, let's solve for the interior angle beta and the magnitude of absolute velocity of car B. By supplementary angles, beta is equal to 126.87 degrees. Then using the second kinematic formula for car B, we can get that V sub B is equal to 7.5 meters per second. To get the magnitude of the required relative velocity, let us apply the cosine law to this triangle. By substitution, we can get that V sub B over A is equal to 15.69 meters per second. To define its direction, let's denote its inclination with respect to the horizontal by angle alpha. Using sine law and the obtained magnitude of V sub B over A, we now get the value of alpha equal to 22.48 degrees. Therefore, our final answer should be written as follows. An alternative method to solve this question, or a way to validate our answer, is to apply the formula for relative motion for this two-dimensional problem. Although it is still recommended to create a geometrical drawing, to properly visualize the situation described in the problem. When using this formula in 2D problems, take note that the components of the vectors 
must be considered in the solution. To determine the components of the required relative velocity, let us start first with the components along horizontal or x-axis. Now we can rewrite the formula in terms of x components only. The x components of v sub b is equal to negative 7.5 times cosine of 53.13 degrees, while for v sub a is positive 10. This gives us negative 14.5 meters per second or 14.5 meters per second to the left. Next, along vertical or y-axis, we can rewrite the formula in terms of y components only. The y component of v sub b is equal to negative 7.5 times sine of 53.13 degrees, while for v sub a is 0. This gives us negative 6 meters per second, or 6 meters per second downward. Using the obtained components, we can now draw a more simplified drawing of the required relative velocity. With this right triangle, let's apply the Pythagorean theorem. Using the value of each component, we can now get the magnitude of V sub B over A equal to 15.69 meters per second. To determine the direction, we can use the tangent function, giving us alpha is equal to 22.48 degrees. Therefore, our final answer will be the same as previously obtained. I hope these sample problems help you increase your understanding about relative motion. Stay safe always. God bless future engineers.